I'm feeding it to the five minutes I have. Um, because the really the biggest value of simulation isn't to you know look up stuff. <laughs> it, it so you know in five minutes to what can you do? I, I think the biggest value of the simulation is um, kind of playing with it, um, noticing what's uh, unusual about it, and um, kind of learning from that. And it's uh, kind of the thing that you can't really hurry through in five minutes. Um, um, but I, I am really excited about this particular simulation because it's a, um, they label it prototype because uh, there's the older version that um, that was, uh, that kind of required uh, me telling people how to bypass the stuff because uh, it's, oh wow, they actually took that off entirely. All right, that's fine. Um, so there used to be a flash simulation version of this. They are in the process of upgrading this. So I think they just got rid of the flash version. All right, so I don't, let me not waste any time with that. So, okay, what I'm excited about this simulation is uh, it kind of intuitively shows you some of the uh, things you can, um, um, that takes a lot of work kind of sketching out <laughs> if you are sketching things. And this new version of the simulation also has a version for mirror, uh, which I hope uh, kind of illustrates the, uh, the reason <laughs> I prefer to work with the lenses. So with the mirrors, when you're drawing ray diagrams for the mirror, it'll tend to get very messy because uh, you can have this kind of overlapping thing and distinguishing between outgoing rays and incoming rays. So sometimes it becomes difficult. That's one of the reasons I prefer the lens description. And um, almost everything you can do with the mirror, there's an analog in the lens version. Um, so, so I'm gonna be working with the lens. I guess the one thing that might be worthwhile pointing out in the mirror version, because I think I've seen this uh, in some students in the past. Sometimes people want to memorize rules that are based on whether something is convex or concave. And I will tell you that um, that'll lead to confusion because things that are convex in lenses does a very different things <laughs> from mirrors that are convex. <laughs> so if you're trying to memorize the things based on whether things are convex or concave, you got to flip them around for lenses and uh, mirrors. And um, what I would recommend, and I think you see me uh, giving this recommendation in lecture, um, when you are memorizing rules like a sign convention, memorize it based on uh, converging or diverging. Uh, leaving it um, to your intuition whether a particular object is diverging or converging. And um, that kind of, it's a kind of a factoring kind of thing, a refactoring kind of thing, you know, refactoring your knowledge. So um, in terms of dealing with the geometric optics, uh, you know what to do when you have a converging arrangement and when you have a diverging arrangement. And in terms of whether concave shaped mirror is converging or diverging, well, <laughs> that's the uh, other piece that I would recommend having as a separate package. So, so let me just work with the lenses. And um, this is already useful to show a number of things. One is, um, so right now this setting is set up to show marginal rays. And uh, when, when you see me do ray diagrams, you won't see me draw marginal rays, uh, partly because uh, it's hard to know with the marginal rays in which way they should bend. Um, it most often we'll be drawing principal rays because the uh, principal rays have a very easy to follow rules um, that I can use to draw them. Now, uh, sometimes with the principal rays, you will have a diagram that maybe looks a little bit um, unnatural, uh, like uh, this ray here, it's not even hitting the lens and it's uh, still bending. It's because the principal rays are, it's just a mathematical tool. It's not necessarily indicating that um, uh, the, uh, any kind of actual physical picture, depending on the size of the lens. Oh wait, that's wrong diameter. Uh, wait, is it a, no, that's, a, well, why? Is, well, anyways, depending on the size of the lens, the, the principal ray may be hitting the lens 
or it might not. Um, either way, what the principal ray uh, tells you, it doesn't change. You can see it here. As I change the diameter, the location of the image doesn't change. And here, what I will say is the most physically correct view is actually this one, the many rays picture. And um, this is really useful when you're drawing a ray diagram for the virtual object. That I think you see me do that in one of the lectures. Um, when you're drawing ray diagram for virtual object, that's uh, when you use the fact that many of the rays that you are not drawing, when you do principal ray diagrams, um, the rays that you don't draw, they are still there. And uh, uh, so that's the real physical picture, that there's an infinite number of rays <laughs> going through the lens that originate from a point. And um, the principal rays are simply what we draw to help us locate the image. And I guess one last thing that might be worth noting while I have the simulation up is um, something uh, kind of a change to note. and. I guess uh, not what um, uh, doesn't change. Um, as you change the size of the lens, so as you make the lens smaller versus larger, the uh, you know. So this is a simulation. It's a simulating things that are programmed in, and it's a programmed to illustrate a certain thing. Note how as I make the diameter of the lens smaller, the extent of the image that uh, being uh, formed here, it doesn't change. Just because I have a smaller lens, that doesn't mean only a smaller portion of the object gets imaged. The entire object still gets imaged. And as I make the diameter larger, what does change is the brightness of the image. It's kind of indicating, you know, in this many rays view, how many of these many physical rays actually go through the lens and forms the image here. With a smaller diameter, less of that happens. That's why your image is so faint. And um, in the lab, you will get to see this in a more fun way in that, um, you know, with this uh, diameter, I think uh, sometimes it's kind of easy to see. All right, so you still have the same issue lens. It's a matter of how much light you catch. So that's why the location and the extent of the image doesn't change. Um, in the lab, you can uh, cover half of the lens, as in cover like a uh, upper half or, or a lower half, and see what kind of change, if at all, happens with the image. So uh, it, this simulation isn't made to do that. It doesn't. I tested it before. It doesn't. Um, yeah, it doesn't give me a barrier that I can move around. So, um, anyways, so um, I would. Uh, um, it, it's a great tool to kind of. Uh, play around, see if uh, uh, the kind of the intuitions you have about ray diagrams match, um, and I'll just leave that there. So.